Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363 7681 Email address org, or visit our website at www Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. You are my battle axe. I know a group of people who are called cultists. And the axe is one of their weapons. And their own axe, because they don't have time, it has to be such that when they strike once, they get their result. And we are told by uh, last night that there was already a declaration, you are my battle as, as if God has already made his choice. And that choice is you and I. There are also some axes that I use for other many jobs. If you are going to cut a vegetable, you don't necessarily need an axe that is sharp. Because even with bare hands, you can break it. When we were in the pre-study yesterday, we were told that even though being a Christian now is difficult, it is going to be more difficult later on to be a Christian. Because every day there are new, new inventions of evils that are coming our way. Those activities that were shameful to be mentioned in the public, they are becoming like the normal life now. In those days, if you hear of lesbianism, it was, it was unthinkable. But now people are involved and they are advertising it and making recruitments. I was told that one church refused to join man and man. And then the man took them to court. And I thought that the court would just dismiss the case. No, they were giving them good hearing. And they said, human rights. You are free to do what you like with your life. So, for those of us who are old, we may soon die. We may not see the terrible situation that is yet coming. Why those of you who are young, when you come to stage, it will be your time. If your axe is blunt, how will you survive? If in our time we need axes that are sharp, in your own time you will need axes that are much more sharp. If in our time somebody may not be too serious with his personal quiet time, but make it in your own time, it is going to be demanded much more then you get more serious with your personal work with God. 
and activities are increasing. Time is becoming more precious now. As I was thinking about it, yes, an axe. But if that axe, something is wrong with it, then there's going to be a problem. And now came across, uh, let's begin from here. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes is after Proverbs. Chapter 10 and verse 10. If the iron be blunt. And he do not wait the age. Then must he put to more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. If the iron be blunt, that is if the axe is blunt, and God said, well, let me just manage it. It is going to cause God more trouble to work with a blunt axe. It will take more strength. I don't know if you have ever tried using a blunt knife or anything to cut something. You will need extra strength to do it. When I look at the theme of our meeting and I saw this verse, it troubled me. And I concluded that this meeting is for waiting the axe. That is making it sharper. That is all that this meeting is talking about. No matter the state you came, the state of your life that you came, no matter how blunt, I hear God saying, it takes his, his, his wisdom to wait the axe. Because if it is not done, the job will not be done. You will sweat so much and achieve very little. As we are singing this song, I kept hearing nothing in between, nothing in between, nothing in between. And all of those things that you are uh, mentioning there, they are the issues that make the act blunt. Any of those things mentioned there, if they are found in any of our lives, they make the act blunt. And if it is blunt, yesterday night we were hearing that God say, I will, I will. That, but even God will find it difficult to work with a blunt act. And so I thought that we will look at some two life I mean, one life here and another group of lives. How, when this understanding came to them, they conducted their lives the way God will use them and he will enjoy using them. I'd like us to start with another youth called Joseph. Uh, from Genesis 37. There was another man that was going to be a battle axe for God. And we are looking at him as mirror. When you look at a mirror, you correct yourself. He is a human being like any of us. He's not a spirit. Um, we know his name. We know it. His parents. Is not a strange figure. But how did he preserve his own acts for God to be able to use without causing God blister palms? Verse 1. Genesis 37 verse 1. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. 
These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. Was feeding the flock. With his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah. And with the sons of Zilpah. His father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father. Their evil reports. Now this is somebody 17 years old. He already knew evil from good. And already there was hatred for evil in his own heart. Joseph will not see evil going on and he will keep quiet. Some of you have roommates on campus. And you see evil going on in your corner, in your room, and you keep quiet. You remove your eyes as if you don't see. That is how to finish your acts before you come on stage. If at your age you see evil going on and you keep quiet as if there's no problem, how are you going to be used in the hand of God. You are already blunt. Joseph saw evil going on. Even among his blood brethren. And he will not keep quiet. The Bible said. He brought. Their evil report. To their own father. And as God saw in the heart of this young man that even at this age he hates evil, God started enlarging his heart. God started sharpening him. God started arranging a big future for him. Whatever will happen to you tomorrow depends on the state of your life today. It is not until you come on stage before you start preparing your life. It is now. When the Lord saw that this young man was a correct man, he started showing him things that even his parents didn't know. Of course, as he was bringing their reports, hatred, I mean, isn't it? If you are going to be a battle as for God, you are going to multiply enemies. You know an axe is not a friendly weapon. How can you strike the enemy and he will be clapping hands for you? If God is going to achieve what he wants to achieve with this meeting, when we get back to campuses, there will be noise. They said this roommate went somewhere and came back and everything has changed. His brothers hated him. And as that hatred was coming, Verse 5 now said, God again came to Joseph and gave him a dream. And in that dream, all his brothers, represented by sheaves, bundles of guinea or whatever, they were falling down. And only his own was standing. I don't know how Satan understand dream so much. As soon as the young man came and told the dream, they understood it. They said, do you mean that we, because he is the last born, do you mean that we the elders, we will all come and bow down and be worshipping you so they hated him the more. This meeting is not a friendly meeting. A 
especially if your axe will become sharp, you are not going to find it friendly. Your manner of life on campus will change. Your manner of life in your place of work will change. Jesus' light inside of you will increase. And you know, people don't like light to beam on them. They will react. But I saw that the reaction of his brothers didn't reduce his light. We are praying that the more reaction you face, the greater light you will shine. If you are not afraid, you will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Then, God came again. And God is going to be coming to us as we have had many, many times in this meeting before we go. Another dream came in verse 8. This time, it was all the stars plus the moon and the sun. And the young man told the dream again. The moon and star, I mean, the moon and the sun were representing his mother and father. And his brother was saying, okay, I thought it was just within us. Now you mean even your mother who born you. And your father who born you. They will also bow. And then hatred increased. What was the devil's problem? Before this axe will start striking us, let's make it blunt. That is why for some of us, sin was introduced into your life very early. A friend of yours just led you into something and you have become a captive. You say, let me just try it and see. And as you tried it, coming out is becoming very, very difficult for you. Satan knows the danger of a sharp axe. Because God said he will use it. So, and the brethren say to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they, they, they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. You know all those mentions of hatred, hatred, hatred. Satan meant to cause fear inside this boy. And to make him abandon his call. But I saw that each time this thing came. The young man was not afraid. So the Bible says he dreamt yet another dream. And told it his brethren. And said behold. I had dreamed a dream more. And behold the sun and the moon. And the eleven stars made obeisance to me. They came and bowed down. But you know, nobody will bow down to a blunt axe. It is the degree of your sharpness that will make the moon and the star and the, the moon and the sun and the eleven stars to come and bow. You will notice that the fear that his brothers wanted to cast on him didn't overcome him. 
the fear that even his parents wanted to cast on him didn't overcome him. And the brothers got more angry and they said, okay, let us kill him. They took cancer together and said, let's kill, let's finish this axe that is in the making. And this particular day, the young man went out to give them food. They were already in the bush grazing, you know. The young man was doing a good work. He went to serve his brothers. And they had already taken counsel before he arrived. In fact, when they saw him come, he said, Here comes the dreamer. Let us finish him. I wish God will give you a new name from this conference. That when you are coming, say, look at that axe coming. That your Christianity will no longer be the kind of hidden type. Everywhere where God has placed you, you will be known. There comes a dreamer. And they knew the dream. Said that man, he said he will rule over us. There are some of you that it's difficult to know whether you are a Christian or not. And you console yourself and say, well, Christianity is a matter of the heart. That thing that is in the heart must come out. You see, God works inside. We are to work it out. If the Lord has done the work of righteousness inside of your heart, you are to live the righteous life outside. If the Lord has given you victory over sin inside your heart, you are to show that victory outside. You don't just stay and say, well, it's a matter of the heart. If it is just a matter of the heart, Joseph didn't need to tell the dream. He would have just kept it in the heart. But you know, he told it and told it and told it. And everybody knew to the point that they named him the dreamer. See the dreamer coming. What are you known for? So they agreed together they will kill him. But God raised somebody among them, one of their brothers. He said, let us not kill him. Let's just carry him and throw him into a dry well. So that we don't shed blood. At every point, God is going to raise hell for you. Yes. You won't die before God finishes with you. Yes, enemies will multiply, but they won't kill you. So they tied him, threw him inside the well, hoping that maybe he will die later. Only for another group of people to be passing that way, and I don't know what made them to go and look inside the well. And they say, oh, there's a human being here. They brought him out. And they went and sold him as a slave in the house of one big man. In that house, there was again another, as if the devil said, okay, I failed in your family, but I'm going to try it somewhere else. In your family, it was just a matter of hatred. But in another place, I'm going to use another strategy. I will make sin cheap for you. You know, some of you don't drink because you cannot buy beer. But when they offer you free, you take it. They say you will not in this place pay for sin. Sin will come free to you. Sometimes you are befriending a girl 
it will cost you the boy, isn't it? You have to buy handset for her. You have to buy shoe for her. You have to buy many, many things for her. This one was going to be the reverse. The wife of a governor was going to be his girlfriend. You understand? He has finished level one. He's on level two. All of these are trying to blunt the axe. Satan doesn't go and leave. Especially for those who are young. Satan is jealous. For people who are old, Satan is saying, even if they want to commit sin, how far will they go? They will soon be tired. But for those who are young, he is jealous. You know, this one will serve me for long. And he will make exploits. You see, on our campuses, when you want to do a riot, is it not the young men? They will just carry songs and placards and start and throw the whole institution into confusion. Before you know it, fire is coming there, fire is coming there, fire is coming everywhere. Old men, whether they are Christians or not, they are too tired for that. This is your strength. Satan is desiring it. And it is the same strength Jesus is also looking for. The Bible says young men will do exploit, but old men will only be dreaming dreams. So in this house, something, there's another wave of temptation, chapter 39 now. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian brought him of, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down. Peter. Look at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph. If the Lord was with Joseph, where was he? When his brothers were showing so much hatred for him? When he was thrown inside a dry pit? When he was sold as a slave? Where is the Lord? You can see that our own definition is different. All the troubles that were happening to Joseph, God was intact inside his heart. You can see that he didn't attempt to avenge. And you know the end of the story that later, later on, when his own brethren visited him, you know if he wanted, he would have imprisoned all of them. But he still said no. It is God who helped you to do what you did to me. So his heart returned God in the face of all these troubles. Said the Lord was with him. I am praying that no academic activities will take God out of your heart. No matter how busy you are, wherever you are, and whatever you may be doing, let the testimony be that and the Lord is with you and the Lord is with you and the Lord is with you. You will now see the advantage of God's continuous companionship with a man. Verse 3 said, And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. You can see the Lord, the Lord was with Joseph. And it is not only Joseph who knew it in his heart that the Lord was with him. Even people, his master knew that the Lord was with him. What is your testimony among your colleagues? Yes, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. That's all right. What do your co colleagues say about you? Can they also confirm that this my roommate is a Christian? This colleague in the office is a Christian. Say so his master also knew 
that the Lord is with this young man who is a slave in my house. And he knew that all the prosperity that was coming to his house was because of this man. He was living the life out. Living the life out. Now, this meeting will bring us into difficulties. But don't suffer as a criminal. Suffer as a righteous person. It is not because Joseph did anything wrong that we find him going through all these difficulties. Actually, Satan was persecuting the acts. He we didn't see him blaming God. Actually, of recent, I'm beginning to feel that if the devil is beginning to get interested in your life, he has seen something godly inside you. That's why he wants to quench it. You know that Joseph is just one out of twelve, isn't it? Why was the devil not worried about others? It is only this young man that has a dream that Satan is interested. Your desire to serve God, your desire to make resort for God, your desire to make exploits for him is going to multiply enemies for us. But let the testimony always be that the Lord is with you, the Lord is with you, the Lord is with you. And let it be known even outside. And we saw that even the temptation of abundance, verse 6, didn't make Joseph blunt. Did you see that? Because in that compound, everything was in his hand. Only Potiphar's wife was kept away from him, but every other thing was in his hand. For some of us, it is abundance that will make you blunt. When God begins to open provision for you, then you will start stepping into things that you never did before. You will start drinking. You will start going to parties. You will start misbehaving. Sometimes it is poverty that kept you that you look like a Christian. It's true. Once they try you with abundance, you just show another color. For Joseph, suffering didn't change him. Abundance didn't change him. That's the kind of acts that God will use in this end time. Don't only be a Christian because you are poor. Let it be that even when God comes with abundance, you will still remain a very correct, sharp axe. Then when he overcame the temptation of abundance, something else happened. Verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes open Joseph and said lie with me. You know this kind of language even halot don't do it. No halot will just see you on the road and say come and lie with me. No. No. It doesn't happen. It will take appeals. She tried first method of just casting. You know, when the Bible says she cast, casting eyes is different from looking at somebody. Casting of eyes had to do with the eyes of immorality. You know, eyes don't talk, but they talk. When you are looking at an enemy, your eyes will show him that there is danger. And yet, when you are casting eyes of immorality, 
it shows. So the Bible didn't say the woman was looking at Joseph. It said she was casting eyes on Joseph. Can any lady help us do that here? When you are looking at somebody lustfully, there's a way you'll be turning your eyes. They'll be going, uh -huh. somebody's confirming, say yes. <laughs> anywhere, you know, Joseph was a slave, oh, but anywhere Joseph was going, whether to go and wash bathroom, she'll be casting the eyes. If Joseph was going to sweep, she'll be casting the eyes. If Joseph, whatever what Joseph was, she would be casting the eye. When Joseph could do respond, she now opened her mouth and said, Come! If you don't understand casting, come! <laughs> you know, all of that, it is because Joseph had a dream. And he said, let's kill him. So even though Satan has now passed from his brothers, Satan is still Satan. The same Satan who was working his brothers is now working in this woman's life. They said, I didn't catch you from the hands of your brothers, I will catch you from the hands of this woman. Come and lie with me. Let's see this young man again. Can you see verse 8? But Joseph refused. Is it like that in your Bible? You see, you are God's battle axe. But you must preserve your sharpness. If you allow this axe to get blunt, God may discard you. Because it will be too difficult to work with you. Say, so Joseph refused. Now let me tell you something. When verse 8 said Joseph refused, it was not only refusing illegal sex. Are you understanding? He was refusing a host of other provisions in that house. You know, if he had agreed, he will eat the best food in that house. He will wear the best clothes in that house. This woman will continue defending him before Pharaoh, isn't it? But now he said, I will not. So again, hatred increased. An axe that God must use should be ready. They are not going to have it easy. Those of you who are our sisters. There may be many other girls in the class. But because Satan has seen your dream. Your lecturer will just fail, you, fail your exam for you. And say if you don't go out with me. I will see how you will graduate. And some of you have spent more than the necessary years for your course. You are still there. The man has vowed, say, over my dead body. What is your sin? It's because you have a dream. That's all. Any day you agree, <laughs> you will pass with first class. But you will lose God. So even here, verse 8 said, but Joseph refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, was it not what is with me in the house? And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee, because 
thou art his wife. Now look at his question. How then can I do this great what? You know, your first point of failure is that many of you don't call sin the correct name. Some of you call sin enjoyment. Mm -mm. If you call anything enjoyment, you may want to test it. How did you call sin? Say this great wickedness. Once you have identified something that is wicked, you won't even want to test it. Say, how can I do this great wickedness and sin? Not even just against your husband, but against God. Did you see it? That's a young man, 17 years old. can I? Do you ever ask yourself that how can I be practicing immorality? How can I that Jesus died for? How can I that Jesus shed his blood for? How can I that Jesus delivered again falling to sin like this? How can I This young man was just 17 years, but you know we read that he hated evil from the beginning. And he has continued to grow with that hatred of evil in his own heart. Remember, there is no pastor preaching to him. Oh. He's just alone there. But he knew that God is here. There were no Christian conferences like this for Joseph, yet he lived a Christian. Many of you have read wonderful books, attended serious conferences where God spoke and great things happened. How will you then go back and begin to serve sin? Joseph said, how can I? My sisters, if a young man come with the eyes of immorality, just ask yourself, how can I? And you will be delivered. Joseph said something. You don't see sin and keep quiet. Young girl, you are passing. And a young man just came and touched you and said, Kai, God did extra good work on your buttocks. So. <laughs> and then you kept quiet. Now! How can I? You know, Satan normally palpates first. He will come and do you some interview. Sometimes by touching you. Do you understand? To see whether you will react or not. If you touch him and say, No, me at the good church. Oh. <laughs> the young man will say he is a pastor himself. As sin was coming, Joseph reminded himself, How can I? See what God did for me. See what God did for me. See what God did for me. He delivered me from the hatred of my brothers. He took me out of the pit. He brought me into this place. How can I? I want to tell you that if you forget what God has done for you, sin will be very easy for you to commit. Verse 10 said, and he hacking. No, he didn't stop at that first attack. Oh. Verse 10 said, when that first time, or oh, come and lie with me, Joseph didn't respond. Then she made it her daily duty. She did it day after day. We don't know how many days. 
So if you see young boys talking to you here and here, you are passing that one, he's saying, tss, tss, another one is saying, tss, tss, another one is saying, tss. don't say, God, why did you make me beautiful? People are worrying me. There are some people more beautiful for you than you, and they are saying, how can I? Oh, if you are beautifully created, ask you, ask yourself, and ask the devil, how can God make me so wonderful, and I will come and be wasting my life? You think sin is only for the ugly? How can I? And Satan felt that if I didn't get this person at the first um, attempt, let me keep trying. So she was doing it day after day. Did you see verse 10? Day after day, day after day, day after day. And Joseph didn't say, Kai, you have worried me too much. Let me try small. Mm -mm. You know, that is the testimony of some of you. So when he came first time, I refused. Then he went again and came the following week and I refused. And then he has been coming and we coming nine, nine. She did it day after day. But look at Joseph's response. And he hearkened not unto her. Are you not serving the same God? Temptations may surround you like he did to this young man. But the Bible says he hearkened not unto her. He didn't stop at that level, verse 11. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph was, I mean, went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. Excuse me, sometimes the devil arranges conducive atmosphere for sin for you. There will be no witness. No pastor, no roommate, no lecturer, nothing, nothing. It will just be you and Satan. And then you will look here and look here and say, Car, even if I do it, nobody will know. Even in that condition, Joseph say, how can I? Because you see, if you are a child of God, no pastor will leave his own duty and be following you anywhere you are going. You will be going with God. It is only God that is omnipresent. He will be following you everywhere. But another man cannot do it. And I saw this young man very conscious of the presence of God. Let me give you a small... Um, <laughs> Those of you who are falling into fornication... Have been Christians, so. and then you backslid and went and fell into sin. The day you are going to fall into sin, did you ask that boy? Say, let's read the one Bible passage and pray before we do it. <laughs> eh? In fact, that day you didn't want to see Bible. If there was light in the room that made you to see Bible in the table, you went and put out the light and pushed the Bible under the table. You want to commit sin, you make sure that God is far from you. But we see, as for Joseph, there was continuous presence of the Lord. The Lord was with him, the Lord was with him, the Lord was with him, the Lord was with him. Was with him. That was his continuous um, experience. So there was nobody in the house. Now, if you are only a Christian, when there are witnesses, then you are not yet a Christian. Oh, if I do this, my mother will know. Oh, if I do this, my father will know. Oh, if I do this, my pastor will know. And that is why you are afraid of sin. 
you are not yet a Christian. This particular day, everything was set for sin. So there was nobody at, her, at home. So if they did it, even the husband of this woman will not know. Isn't it? But Joseph knew that there is an unseen eye and a quiet ear. The eyes were watching two of them. The ears were listening to their discussion. So even in the presence of nobody, there were three witnesses. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Excuse me, when you appear to be alone, you are not alone. There are three witnesses there. When casting of eyes and uttering of words couldn't work, something happened again. They went to another level. Verse 11 and 12 came to pass about the same time that Joseph went into the house to do his business and there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him. A woman wanted to rape a man. If Joseph's heart was weak already, he said, okay. I didn't go for her. She's the one that looked for me. And she will tell, he will tell God, God, you are my witness. You know I've been resisting. You know I've been resisting. I know I've been resisting. It will not be the woman pushing him down. He will push down himself. Many of you, you say, they raped me, they raped me. What effort did you do that that thing was against your will? You no know, shout. You didn't do anything. You submitted. I hope you are seeing the growing degree of attack on Joseph because of the dream. Sometimes it is not even because you are too beautiful, oh, but because you have a dream. Boys are happy when three girls are fighting over their head. Is it because you are very handsome? But you have a dream that is a trouble to Satan. And he wants to quench it by all means. He sent this girl, she didn't succeed. He sent another one, didn't succeed. He sent another one. So you see them clashing and fighting to quench that dream. You know, they say, let's kill him and see what will happen to the dream. That was the point of the, the battle. So when she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. Whether you like it or not, lie with me. So what did Joseph do? I want you to look at your Bibles over verse 12. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. How much have you resisted sin? Some of you, ordinary text message will finish you. Hello, darling. Who told you you are darling? When the devil wants to finish you, he gives you wonderful names. So because I didn't see you yesterday, I couldn't understand my lectures. Are you his lecturer? There is a dream, a godly dream you have, and Satan has seen it 
And he's saying, let's do whatever we can do to finish this. Instead of Joseph to stay there and say, no, you must give me my dress. You must give me my dress. You must give me my dress. He said, between dress and God, let me lose the dress. He threw it away and ran. And the Bible says, he got himself out. You understand? Flee fornication. You see, the way the Bible taught us how to escape from sin is to flee. You don't stand there and say, look, as I'm standing here, I bind you, you cannot do me anything. No! Flee! When he stood, the woman caught him, isn't it? When he started running, could the woman catch him? No! Don't stand where sin is and say, I'm resisting. You won't make it. You have a dream that you got to protect jealously. If the devil has wounded and battered you, and you announce, okay, God, use me, mm, it will take a lot of effort. If the iron be blunt, huh, even God will require more strength to use it. And I hear many of them say, God use me, God use me, God use me. And God is saying, I'm trying, but you know. What has happened to your axe? Has it been made blunt? And if it is made blunt, what caused it? Who caused it for you? What temptation did you enter? Who is your friend that made you blunt in the hand of God? Who is that friend that killed your prayer life? Who is that friend that has killed your personal work with God? Bible is no longer interesting. You spend all your time on phone now. You move from WhatsApp to Zenda to this one to that one to that one. And there are so many applications you can put 24 hours there. You have not finished. Somebody introduced you to a terrible package on phone. You just look for one corner, settle there and be watching dirty, dirty, dirty pictures. As you are watching them, you are getting blunt and blunt and blunt and blunt. By the time God wants to use you, it will take difficult labor to, to, to arrive at that. Sometimes we hear you say, well, I'm not understanding my Bible again. There's a reason. Something has happened that your eyes cannot see beyond the black and white of your, letter, of your Bible. So when I kneel down to pray, I will be having wandering thoughts. Can I tell you your wandering thoughts? They are the things you did. And the thoughts of your heart that have departed from God. When you don't get into the present, they just come back. How can you kneel down in the place of prayer and you will see a boy touching your, your back? I'm happy Joseph is a human being like any of us. It's not a spirit. And there is no temptation you are passing through that Joseph didn't pass through. Talk about hatred. Talk about abundance. Talk about immorality. Talk about anything. It was there. You remember he even went to prison. Even in prison. The Bible says, And the Lord was with him. <laughs> Some of you who are in the 
uh, campus fellowships. Sometimes you just have small headache. And then you said, the fellowship president didn't even come to greet me. So I will not go to fellowship again. Can you imagine? So if you go to prison, I think you will burn God. You will set fire on God, isn't it? I want you to know that all this that is happening to Joseph didn't reduce the dream. The dream was increasing and increasing and increasing. That is why he could resist sin to any level. If the iron be blunt, it will take too much effort. I don't know whether here you have blacksmith or but over there we have blacksmith, those who who construct local farming instruments. When an implement has become too blunt to a point that the farmer cannot use it, they carry it back again to blacksmith. And then he will sharpen it, sharpen it, sharpen it, sharpen it, sharpen it, and get it ready for use again. This meeting, because you have come, God is ready to recover you. Whatever has happened to you is ready to recover you. So even if your axe is blunt, there is hope. But well, let's look at Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Second Kings chapter 6. Are you there? From verse 1. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. The word straight there means tight. It's too tight. No room. So they suggested, let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take there every man a beam, and let us make us a place there, where we may dwell. And the man of God answered them and said, go ye. Verse 3. One said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And the man of God said, okay. And we go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was failing a beam, the axe head. You know what is axe head? I don't know how you make your axes here. But you have the handle. And then you have the cutting edge. That cutting edge is what we call the axe head. Satan is not worried about the handle. Are you understanding? He is worried about what can cut. So look at what happened here. Verse 5. But as one was failing a beam, the axe head fell into the water. Then the man cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, We have fell it. And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick <laughs> and cast in thither. And the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. There was a practical case of the use of an axe. Elisha was a leader and he had some disciples under him. 
And one day the disciples just came together and told Elisha, excuse me, this accommodation is too tight. We want a large accommodation. We want a large place. They didn't only bring the problem, they also proffered the solution. They said, we are going to cut beams to come and make a bigger tent. Elisha listened to them and said, okay, go well. Oh. They were about going. When one of them said, ah, ah, is it right for us to go and leave the man of God behind? Let him follow us. So they went back. Said, so can you come with me or with us? The man said, okay, if you want me to come with you, I will come with you. Where did you leave God and you are traveling alone? You know, all the evils that have happened to you is because you went alone. No? And when they happened, there was no way to be delivered. What even took you out? You say rules and regulations about Christian life are too many. It's too hard. I want expansion. And you've been changing one church to another. He said, this one, they say, we must cover head. This one say, we must wear shoes. This one say, we must do this. This one say, we must do this. No! Christianity is a, a religion of liberty. That's what you say. So you have been moving and moving. Anywhere you go, you say, it's too tight. It's too tight. It's too tight. You were looking for an expansion. And finally, he took you out. Going to cut a beam. And as they went, this particular beam they wanted to cut was at the bank of River Jordan. And if you know River Jordan, River Jordan is one river that overflows its bank even in the dry season. Whether there is no rain or, or there is rain, River Jordan never dries. Where Satan is planning to take you is such a place that if you land there, you won't rec be recovered. Sometimes when they ask you to dress well, you say, this place is too tight. Anywhere you go, they're asking you to do the right thing. You say, this place is too straight. I want expansion. I want liberty. I want to live the way I like. I want to serve the God the way I like. Until you bolted out. And as you bolted out, the devil said, okay. I will show you a beam. And he gave him an axe. And he carried it. And he was going. And they got to that tree. Got it. And they were cutting. Ever before the tree will fall down, the axe head disengaged from the handle and fell inside River Jordan. What were you cutting when you lost the sharpness of your life? You know, some of you, you were living well. Oh. You even had good testimony. Until the desire to marry came inside you. And one young man came and you say you are doing courtship. Every time he come, you'll be drinking your breast and sucking your tongue and doing all of this until the axe head fell out. So when he was touching me the first time, I was refusing, but he didn't stop. He was just doing it and doing it, and that is why. Uh, sometimes when you have fallen, you will not be blaming them. Say that brother has a reducing, I mean, a seducing spirit. He needs deliverance. Now, if somebody has seducing spirit, don't you have resisting spirit? It 
was because these people were looking for expansion that they landed into that problem. Say so he came, he said he wanted to marry me, he wanted to marry me. That's why I thought that there would be no problem, there would be no problem. Now when the thing was turning into a problem, didn't you know? And you kept quiet. You know Joseph didn't keep quiet. And young girls, I warn you, any brother who even look like Jesus, if he come and he say he wants to marry you, I start playing with you anyhow. Just know that the man wants to remove your axe head. He wants to, to crush your testimony. If the axe head got blunt, it is not evil. But if he gets lost and falls inside water, is the most terrible. As they were cutting the beam, backsliding does not just come. Something brings backsliding. Who are your friends? What are the lifestyles that you are learning from your friends? What are they introducing you to? Somebody taught you how to go to wild parties. Especially girls, your roommate has one powerful perfume. You know, when you apply it on her dress, even if she leaves the room, the next three hours she's still present. The thing, the whole room is that. And you're asking, where did you get that? And then say, do you want it? He said, yes, okay, come. It will carry you to a beam. That's where you will lose your axe head. As they were cutting a beam, what were you doing that your prayer life died? Where did you get involved that the Bible is no longer opening to you? When you read, no understanding anymore. What kind of program do you get? Did you get involved? That even going for fellowship is now a waste to you. The devil will sit you down and say, well, even if I don't go to fellowship, Jesus is here with me. Who told you? Have you lost your axe head? You know, the first matter was, is your axe head, has it become blunt? That's one. But this second one, is he completely also lost? But you see, something good happened because in this meeting, God doesn't want losses. He wants to recover all. Now, so when that axe head fell inside water, something happened. Verse 5. But as one was failing a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And then the man cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. You see, you will be helped in this meeting if you cry out. But if you sit down as if nothing has happened, if you sit down as if nothing is wrong, if you sit down and see if all is alright, you will perish. When he went out and started cutting that thing, and then the axe had disengaged and fell into water, you know now they are receiving nothing to cut anything with. 
you know that that boy came and cheated you and left. Abi? He came and said, I will marry you, I will marry you. When he finished you, he has gone. There is nothing to cut with. If you say, look, when you came the other time, I missed my message, so go and find it. If you miss it, go and find it. He has gone. Now, but when this assay got lost, <clears throat> the man said, no shame. I have to cry. And I must cry aloud. Oh, master! Alas, it was borrowed. Alas, it was borrowed. The Lord is interested in hearing your cry this afternoon. If you cry, there will be recovery. But if you sit down as if you are alright, you will perish. So when he cried out, the man of God who followed them, he came and he asked them a question, verse 6. Did you see verse 6? We are fail it. I want you to see verse 6. So, yes, the axe head is lost, but where? Fail it. Where is that point of your backsliding? What happened at so, so, so point? Was it because the lecturer said, if you don't sleep with me, you will not graduate? Is that where you lost your axe head? Where did it fall? Or when the exam came, and because you didn't prepare enough, you just enter into the exam hall and you look at all the questions and there was nothing you could answer. You enter exam and practice. Is that where you lost your accent? Since you came out from the hall, you have no boldness to go before God anymore. We have failed it. Where did it fall? No, leave that one. Where did it fall? Where did you go? What were you doing? What were you doing in that boy's room at late hour? Even if you claim that he called me for prayers. And then as he began to pray, he started coming near you. He said, the Holy Spirit coming near you. The man started coming near you. And then the prayer ended up in a bad way. They are asking you, where did it, the axe head fall? Some of you say, my parents are too difficult. They don't give me money. So if I don't lie to them, I don't get anything. And so you have started telling lies. Where did it fall? Well, some say, because my parents are difficult, it is this uh, person that is helping me. How many of you are students here? Students. Uh -huh. in the majority you know some of you our sisters and daughters you have become cooks for students that boy has become your school husband he has even bought a flask and given you every time you cook for him inside and you know, anatomically, stomach is near heart. If you feed the stomach too much, it will enter his heart. It will catch you. We have failed it. Or is it because he bought one powerful handset for you? And that was where you lost your Christian life? We have failed it. 
So I am discovering you don't only cry, you also show the place. Did you see that? You say, Lord, Lord, I am bad, I'm a sinner. I'm saying, yes, we are failed. You don't just make empty confession. The prophet heard their cry, but they now needed to show where it happened and what happened. And they showed him the place. Did you see the verse? And he showed him the place. Did you see verse 6? Who has, who has crippled your Christian life? Who has quenched your own spirit? Sometimes somebody just gives you lift in his car. And then you lost your axe head. We started discussing useless things, useless things. And you didn't have boldness to say, look, I'm a child of God. You keep quiet. Anytime you see sin and you keep quiet, sin will finish you. We have failed it. And I said, they showed him the place. Now, even if you have lost your axe head, there are two things you must do. Number one, cry out. Is that okay? Don't keep quiet about your backsliding. Don't keep quiet about your sinful habits. Cry out. Number two. Don't stop at just crying. Do what? Show the place. Did you see verse six? If this brother start crying now and say, Help me, help me, help me. And we rush there. I think the next question is, what happened to you? Maybe he will say, scorpion, scorpion, scorpion. Say, where did he bite you? He will show the place. Isn't it? Then he will receive help. So, when he shows,